And during the few moments that we have left, we want to have just an off-the-cuff chat between you and me, us. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is us. We're her problem. The only reason she has a problem is she doesn't want us here. And every time you look at yourself, be you black, brown, red, or yellow, a so-called Negro, you, are, you represent a person who poses such a serious problem for America because you're not wanted. Once you face this as a fact, then you can start plotting a course that will make you appear intelligent instead of unintelligent. When you try to integrate the white community in search of better housing, the white people there fled to the suburbs. And the community that you thought would be integrated soon deteriorated into another all-black slum. What happened to the liberal whites? Why did they flee? You thought they were your friends. And after the 1954 Supreme Court desegregation decision, the same thing happened when you tried to integrate the white school. All the white students disappeared into the suburbs, and the caliber of what you thought was an integrated school soon fell to the same level as the slum school from which you thought you had escaped. Just as efforts to integrate housing failed miserably, efforts to integrate schools that have been an even more miserable failure. Having failed to get integrated housing and integrated schools, now the Negro leaders are demanding integrated jobs, which means they are demanding a certain quarter or percentage of white people's jobs. What will this lead to? First, the Negro leadership demanded the white man's house, and the whites vacated their rundown houses for us and built new homes for themselves out in the suburbs. Then the Negro leadership demanded seats for our children in, white, in the white man's school. The whites evacuated the school as our children moved in. And they built modern schools for themselves out in the suburbs. But now the Negro leadership is demanding the white man's job. Can the whites vacate their jobs like they vacated their homes and their schools? Not without violence and bloodshed. Why? Because the Klan is a cowardly outfit. They have, they have uh, perfected the art of making Negroes be afraid. And as long as the Negro is afraid, the Klan is safe. But the Klan itself is coward. They, they never come, one of them never come after one of you. They all come together. They're scared of it. And you sit there when they put putting the rope around your neck saying, forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. As long as they've been doing it, they're experts at it. They know what they're doing. No, since the federal government has shown that it isn't going to do anything about it, but talk, then it is a duty. It's your and my duty as men, as human beings. It's, the, it's our duty to our people to organize ourselves and let the government know that if they don't stop that clan, we'll stop it ourselves. And then you'll see the government start doing something about it. But don't ever think that they're going to do it just on some kind of morality basis. No, we only mean vigorous action in self-defense and that vigorous action we feel we're justified in initiating by any means necessary and when we say this the press calls us racist in reverse 
with skillful manipulating of the press, they're able to make the victim look like the criminal and the criminal look like the victim. Right now, when in New York, uh, we had a couple cases where police grabbed the brother and beat him unmercifully and then charged him with assaulting them. They use the press to make it look like he's the criminal and they're the victim. This is how they do it. And if you study how they do it here, then you'll know how they do it over here. It's the same game going all the time. And if you and I don't awaken and see what this man is doing to us, then it'll be too late. They may have the gas ovens already built before you realize that they're hot.